how because of the Holy Spirit of God in Daniel and Co, how excellent and how different they were. The Bible even testified of it that the king that then was in charge read them and said, Daniel, thou art with an excellent spirit. He didn't say Daniel is excellent because he is highly educated, because he is special in something particular, but he identify the excellency of Daniel relating to the Holy Spirit that is in God, which he sees in him. Today we continue and to know how we desire the gifts. Desiring the gifts. I purpose it desiring to make it now being present continues. In the sense that never cease desiring for the Holy Spirit. I normally teach people, I advise my house, I lead that you should not be selfish, you should not be greedy. When you get, you should think of others. Anytime you're looking for 10, make sure if it by help someone after you can make it nine. And please, I'm not just talking this. This is me. Sometimes when I'm around with people and it's all about me, it makes me feel embarrassed. Sometimes I feel even people should look better than I do if that will work. But then today, I defy to change my language. If there is something you will be good in, if there is something I wish and you wish to have all, let it be about the Holy Spirit. Never put measure on them. Are you getting me? That is why I use the subject as desiring. That means today I wish you can prophesy. Let tomorrow be about uh, be a prophet itself. You understand me? That means you've gone from higher from just prophesying and being in the office itself. If today, for example, you speaking in tongues, it's my prayer, tomorrow you will speak the tongues and interpret it. Today, if you speak the tongues and interpret it, it's my desire that tomorrow you will speak the tongues, interpret it, have wisdom. Because let, let me tell you the truth. Some people can preach nicely. Some people can interpret it nicely. But they can be caught by their own this. But when you get wisdom. And wisdom teaches you how to trade. How to monitor. How to advance your steps. Please. You can escape the snare of these days. So more of them. And even if you have. The wisdom is my prayer. You will have knowledge. Look, if it comes to a measure that you are so knowledgeable that in all interpretation, in all understanding, in all lies, they are hand tips. Yes, God can grace you with that. God can do it. And even if you have all the knowledge, it's my prayer. And I pray, I pray, the good God will grace you and deal you with faith. You see, most of us are falling apart. Most of us are willing. Most of us are dying. Most of us are giving up. It's just because of lack of faith. But the language of faith says that I don't know what to say, quit. Faith doesn't fear. Faith doesn't back back. It is forward and forward forever and backwards never. So it's my desire that today you have a spirit of grappling. It's my desire that today you will have a spirit of, I don't know how to seize. That's why in the matters of the Holy Spirit, when he talks of fullness, then he talks of overflow. 
Because it's only in the area of the doings of the Holy Spirit that has no boundaries. That has no boundaries. And that's my wish and my desire. That the Holy Spirit of the Most High God, by His presence will be imparting into His people right now. That the church shall go over bling in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let's see desiring spiritual gifts. And let's pick our test. You don't forget that I've already encouraged you to read the whole book of Daniel or Daniel as many consecutive times as you can. As you can, over and over, over and over. Let, be very confident with the book. And if someone have an ear, if someone have an eye, if someone has an ear and he's listening, you will already see signs on the wall about what this book has predicted. I told you last week that through this book, I will be interpreting the versions of politics. I told you about how he's going to talk about money. I told you how he's going to talk about governance. All what is going on in America and around the world was spoken of by this book, which is in eschatology. So the book of Daniel, if you know and you read and the Holy Spirit speaks to you through it, you will know how to advance your steps. Please, don't sit down for somebody to say something before you start to say, let me be careful. We need to be careful already. Hopefully, I will be commenting on it. When in course of this week, our president make the comment with the double O to the whole. Yeah, because they say we shouldn't say the middle ones. We should leave it a whole. In between the gap. Who? Oh. The whole world is crying. The whole world is talking. But this book has spoken about it already. We don't sit down for something to happen before we start to think, let's be careful. This book can teach us how to be careful in advance. And please, I feel like I am carrying the world on my shoulders. Because I have got an eye and I'm seeing what someone doesn't see. So when I come and I'm talking about it, it's like I mean from different world. And that is why us, Pastor uh, Apostle Paul said, God, may you open and enlighten the understanding of their eyes. That they will understand and see the wonders of this world. You are blessed so much for God to have an edge over you. What I mean by God to have an edge is for God to be your advisor. If the world advises you, woe to you. Because he will do it in a style to lead you. But when the Holy Spirit, especially through the interpretation of the scriptures, will always do it to your favor. Because, me, listen, God, through Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, loves us. Period. It goes like this. Daniel 1 8. I wish the church will read with me, please. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the Enoch that he might not defy himself. I, 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 I'm liking it. I'm liking your response. I'm liking your spirit. Please, can you put your hands together for yourself? And help me and let's make it the last time before I go. On. Go. 
Daniel 1, 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. <laughs> um, we heard clearly, if I'm not mistaken, purpose. If I know little English, I would say purpose in the past tense here. Am I right? In that way, decided. If I can put it in that way. Thank you. Decided. In other words, took a decision. And looking at who decided and who purpose here was in a singular form. I'm giving to you what the Holy Spirit wants you to know. Here, he did not say the church purpose. He did not say the man and the wife decided. He said, Daniel purposed, decided, took a decision. But don't forget that this context was dealing with plurality. Have you heard before about Daniel and Co? Have you heard about Meshach? Have you heard about Shadrach? Have you heard about Abednego? Why it wasn't that Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego purpose? But he, yeah, he was singularizing it that Daniel alone. Please think about it. That means and let, let me go further here. Apart from the Jews that we were I, I just call and mention by names. The book at Neza the king that sermon them. He called for only the highly educated ones. And it was those that Daniel was among. So why wasn't that their purpose, those of them? That means, listen, it came once upon the time. They saw a very good food. They saw a very delicious diet. They saw a very very rich uh, meat. Are you getting me? He used the word the deli uh, delicacies. That means assault. Assorted. If it was wine, it was wine of wine. Everything was in a class, a class of its own. So for hearing Daniel purpose means that hopefully the rest was falling to it. The rest were why not doing three nanti? Are you getting it? Something is happening here. Sometimes we, we should look and listen to the Bible from its spiritual point of view. Just from each English and grammatical presentation. And that is why the Holy Spirit is taking you to this level. And someone, somebody, or maybe me will be saying, it is about Daniel. But please, ladies and gentlemen, it is about America today. You can get in the midst of all the guests. You can get in the midst of the riches. You can get in the midst of many to choose from. Sometimes when you haven't been tempted, you can say you are righteous. Be tempted before you know that you are righteous. 
Sometimes when you haven't seen the difference, you will say you would have made it. Get the difference before you know your very character. So Daniel probably saw what was going on. How people were failing, I mean, were, were, were seconding to the system, the riches, the apologies, etc. He sat aside and when they brought it before him, he said, no. They turned the verse, he said, no. Purpose means something transpired and yet he stood on his word. Grounds. That's what it means. So with all what went on, then I am sure from here, then he called the other three. Then he told them, listen, we are on like them. Hopefully they have then tested or whatever. I'm not saying they have, but here he is talking. Hopefully they were tempting, they were in between. Have you got to that stage before? Let me do it or not do it. Let me steal or not steal. That means they were tempted with the king's delicacies. But Daniel went beyond doubt and said, no way. I will prefer to die than this. Listen. If African leaders are crying, they should learn from Daniel. They should learn that when they travel and they sign a contract and there are some articles you can steal and make rich above, say no. Say no. Let pastors learn from Daniel here. Ratification of false. Will you see the money? And you will know that treasure, it belongs to the church. I'm telling you, treasure, I'm not lying before God and man. These days, some pastors can agree with their treasures and sign check in the name of praise the Lord. Let me say, in the name of praise the Lord, sometimes I deliberately want to save my hair from some ways. But will you say to yourself, if it has not been given to me, I won't touch it. I won't touch it. If it is not in my name, it doesn't belong to me. That's it. That's why I'm talking about dignify. Dignify is where you can read through the lines, but the language that goes with you is different. Daniel said, no. I, I come from Israel, so being in Babylon doesn't make me Babylonian. So I have purpose, no way. Say with me, no way. Then he went on and he called his colleagues. He said, listen, this is how we will go. We're going to do this way. We're going to eat vegetables. We're going to drink this. We're going to put to the Enoch, the chief Enoch, that this is how we know we will do it. And we can acquire the wisdom. We can acquire the spirit. And that is where our team comes in, desire. Desire means it is not uh, imposing on you. Desire means police is not standing on you. The desire is that temperament of Joseph. Where he alone with the woman of Potiphar. He could have too, he, he could have done anything and could have been covered. But he desired to grow in the Lord than to grow in the house of Potiphar. He desired that in the things of God, just that the woman will beat her back, his back, and pant him or whatever. That 
that's the desire there. The desire doesn't impose on you. It's not false, but out of yourself, that is about even Christianity. Are you getting me? Other religions are not desiring. Look, if I'm not here to judge, but the little Islamic history I read was where once upon the time, this guy, his followers will tell you, if you don't follow us, we will kill you. Have you read um, those things? And if there is a knife on your throat, which one will you say? I will follow it. That one is not a true worship. Christianity is where God, listen to me, church, God can one day make a decision whether we like or not serve him. Because if you like, let this snow continue for three weeks. And let there be announcement that anyone who will say Jesus, the snow will stop. I'm telling you, Trump will say Jesus. All the house will say Jesus. Everybody will say Jesus. If you want a typical example, I was in this country 9-11. Before 9-11, church was empty. And after the 9-11, every church in America was filled up. When people see danger, they are will not have any interpretation anymore. So this time, it, God can cause anything by force to let us change our mind. But why is it that God gives our will to us? So that we will by willingly say we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior or to say we denounce him. That's the desire there. So Daniel saw him be the two, but he desired and he decided that no, I want the loss. That's what I'm talking about here. So spiritual gifts are desire. He saw that, listen here, the king is looking for intelligent people. But intelligent doesn't come through eating only. Intelligent comes from above. And before I will get the gifts that comes from above, I have to desire God himself. So ladies and gentlemen, thank God for grace. But all in the name of grace, let me tell the church the truth. What is grace? Grace is God giving Jesus. But God says, for whosoever who what? Believe. So though there is grace, but if you don't believe, you can be damned. That's Bible there. You can die just in front of grace. So it is up to you to desire that I want gift. I want that Jesus. As the deer panthers for the water, so my soul panthers after him. That is the desire. And the desire is where we crawl. The desire is where we give. The desire is where it is so snoring and yet we walk through it and defy the snow and come here. The desire is where sometimes, listen to me, who is rich here? Let me tell you, the rich people, what they desire most is their small, small money. That is what makes for them. Rich people are particular with their pennies than their millions. So I'm trying to say that there is no one in the house of God who is loaded so much that when I'm giving this, I don't care. Any giving cares. But even in the caring, you will say, I want to give to God. It's a desire. No one forces you. If a giving comes to a terms that the, 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 the offer, the treasure will wrap you and you become convicted and not Bible convincing you or from your understanding that you're giving to your God is robbery. Let me tell you the truth. It's robbery. It should come from your heart. That is desiring. I love doing it for God. I love singing. I love, I mean, I, I just love obeying. Not that because I fear. You fear me? No. Don't fear me. But it should be your desire. I love it. I am doing it because he said it in representing of what he represents for. That's the desire. No pressure on you. And yet, you, you can, you, I mean, once a time, 
Jeremiah put it in this way. He said, sometimes I feel like quitting. But anytime I purpose that, I come back doing the same thing I have purpose to quit. Because it burns in my bones like a fire. That's the desire there. Nobody has put a bell on it. But when you are there, you feel like Adam and Bibo Wakumem. That's a spirit of desiring. I just love doing it. And that's what I want to live my life for. I love it so me. It's part of me. It's part of me. When, when, I, when I don't do it, I feel like I've lost something. That's the desire. That, that's what the Bible is talking about. And it takes a people of purpose. Daniel said he desired. So we're talking about desiring. 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 And they said, no. We desire to have God rather than have that of Nebuchadnezzar. So they purpose in their heart. That we will go after God's way instead of Nebuchadnezzar's way. Now, let's see here. The man that God used so mightily, the man that God, I mean, uh, uh, let me address this before we go there. So, when Daniel purposed in his heart and he translated the version to his schools, then they also responded. So, sometimes the church can even be quiet. When God is moving mightily, he doesn't sometimes move with cloud. He moves with a person. A person. A person. Daniel just took a decision and it affected his cause and it did the whole thing. One person in this church can turn around everything upon your desire. One person in the family. One person in a person, a person. It's not about all. After all, when God wants to save the whole world, it was a person. Jesus desire, he purpose, and that is the fruit of you and I. A person. So it takes a people responding. Only today you can respond to something that I would desire to do this. You got it. There you go. So let's see something here from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, but purpose more of the verse 1. Paul says, pursue what? Love. And desire spiritual gifts. You see here, when he came to the gift, he made it plural. I mean, don't go for just gift. Go for gifts. But especially that you may Professor, that means advance in the things of spirit. Advance. I'm going to give you a teachings to end that. When Daniel started performing the miracle, it wasn't just Daniel, but he had what it takes to perform a miracle before he was able to perform a miracle. That's all it is about. Sometimes, <laughs> so you will say, ah, I went to hospital and the doctor is good. I wish I am a doctor. Go ahead and take one of your children and open him or her. You will be carried by police. It takes something before he can become that doctor. You can't just go to the pharmaceutical shop and you say, I saw he was taking this medicine, he was taking this medicine. So I also can pick this medicine. You will... It wasn't just an eye who is picking medicines. Are you getting me? He has been trained to pick them. So that is what Daniel saw. So when you desire to pick medicine from Kanta, desire to go to the school. Are you getting? That was the wisdom of Daniel. He said the king is looking for someone. You see, when the king made Daniel the head of all, it wasn't just because Daniel was handsome. But he saw his abilities and the way and his dynamics. He said, no, this man has an excellent spirit. But then Daniel has gone through this. He has desire to seek the face of his God and his God has graced him with the wisdom. So when he is doing it, it just comes and just flows. 
So here Paul was also saying that, me, Paul, you saw me one day and I'm doing all those marvelous things. I have an advice for the church. The church of Coley, when you meet, don't be so anxious too much to be great. Don't be so anxious to be powerful. Don't be so anxious to be pastors overnight. But listen, I want to advise you. And this, I want you to put yourself there in the gap. Pursue after love. He said, when you pursue after love, then you must, he said, first desire the gift of the spirit. By pursuing for love, by doing this, doing this, doing this. And when you get them, they will start to come out. It says something in the inside is what working on the... Uh, there you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Then he says, for he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Is that right? But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Here the men also is in plural. Do you know what he was saying? He says, after you have got it spiritually, then you can translate it physically to the level of the people. But look at what happened to Daniel. When Daniel and his people were desiring Hopefully the others were eating their meals and enjoying. They thought they were below or something missing. But when it came to the time of difficulty, and I explained to you last week that the king came out that even though I have dreamt, but I have forgotten my dream. Look at such a, excuse me. Look, I will get, when I get to the politics, I'm going to teach you to be careful about what he says about Trump. God doesn't care about who is on the throne. Excuse me. If Trump is kaboot man, Nebuchadnezzar was much kaboot than Trump. The level at which sometimes Nebuchadnezzar can Trump on Kafa. Are you getting what I'm saying? How can you call people and tell them that my son dies, you will have free die, you know? You can't die, you know? First of all, maybe so, you know? Now we can't die anywhere. Watch them, I see. Now I saw them, I thought, I want to watch them, I see, I'm a cool. Have some of you read the book of Daniel? He attached this condition. If Trump were to do half of this, Though there is no revolution in the civilized country, we will all call for revolution. So he hasn't got anywhere close. But then because someone was gifted, the Bible says when the news went out and they arrested all the wise men that have rather defiled themselves, that have ate the delicacies of the king, and then they told the king the truth. He said, Nana, what did they say? He said, we never have heard this statement in life. That somebody will dream his dream for somebody to come and tell him his dream and interpret the dream. This has never happened under the earth, under the sun. No man, no king speaks foolishly like this. Hallelujah. It is you who fear to say shit. Bible talks about it. If you like, I'll open Bible and you will read and you will see shit. Bible didn't take the whole day. I'm saying it like something laughable or whichever. Something funny. But I'm miserable. I am so much miserable when I get to certain level to explain why I'm miserable and I get to certain level to tell you why all the time I've been telling you, be careful, be careful. You understand the world I carry on my shoulder. We haven't heard anything yet. Listen to me. Some people are saying, Trump said it, Trump said it. God loves us. You hear what I'm saying? God rather loves us 
Onyame do Do you think Obama didn't say it? Obama would have said it worse. If you don't know, I'm telling you today. I want to tell you that the difference between Obibinini Bruni there, Bruni the Thai Bebono, Bibini Be in Boom. Are you getting me? Trump is just by heart man. And he said it. Did Obama don't get, uh, did he not get over uh, eight years on the throne? Was he able to do the DACA? Oh, is that the DACA we're talking about? Why didn't he do it? Except he did it wisely. Politely. Let me do it in pen form. Let me do it democratic way of talking form. But he is a plain man. He is saying it in a language which is in his heart. Because the Bible says out of the heart. And the mouth speaks. So that is how it is. What happened and he said. Let me explain it to you. It is like. You pray all the time that God help me. God help me. Do not lead me into temptation. Do not deliver me from evil. Are you getting me? And you have prayed nicely. And then you went to sleep. And you saw that your mother is a witch. He is doing that. When you wake up, how do you behave? Mommy says, say now with you. Is that how you are? That is what has happened to us now. Are you understanding me? It is God who is revealing to us those very people we depend on. How when they go secretly, how they say, how they think, what they have in their hearts about us. Somebody was saying that let's go to China. They will kill all of us and take their, our land. What is going on means we should start to think a thinking that we will be self dependent. But Sebi, Are you getting me? Begin to think that no bed can die in the air for the feather to remain there. I was sharing with you last week that somebody was saying, as I mean, <laughs> I am black, but I don't go to black men church. I, I go to white people church because that's for the black people. I don't mingle with them. Okay. When we come from the hole, you don't come from there too. Me, I come from there. I come from there. I wept this week. I love Trump. And I thank God that if really he said it, he made me know how to think. Have you heard before that they say when someone knock your head, he is not just breaking your head, but he is teaching you how to be strong. Let's stop saying it in different verses and use it to think. I went on my knees this week and I said, God, how can I raise hospital in Ghana? I want to build a hospital myself. Where I will do a medical school. I drove my car around Howard University and I couldn't stop looking at it. I was looking at Howard University like if I can carry it and put it in my car, we take it back home. But spiritual, we don't, and physical, we don't take it back home like that. So you start to prepare. And it is my prayer. I will do it in Ghana. I will do it. I'm not just talking it. I started already. One day it will happen. If I have raised doctors, if I have raised this thing, if I have done this thing, I knew even in immigration law, there was one particular law that if you were able to carry a certain amount of money to America, at a point in time, you fix in their citizenship directly. And that's what exactly our president was talking about. Comparing the Nigerians, uh, what do you mean? 
Norwegians to the Haitis and Africans. That means they are, who can bring in capital. But these people are part of the world. That means they don't have anything. So when someone says this, what do you think? Do you lament about the statement? You should rather think about how you also will be innovative. How you will be innovative. How you will be creative. How you will do things. If God has prospered and this place, I have put on one like the Trump Tower. And the next level belongs to you. You've put on one like those in DC. And opposite us, hopefully God has blessed this man and he has put on something there. I'm telling you, Town of Dolphins will invite us to their meetings. Whether you are hot or hot, they will start to respect you. And these are the things we need to start to think about. But this thing doesn't come all over overnight. It comes by when you are gifted. Do you think Trump just got up and he became rich? Look at how he behaves. Look at how his children behave. You could see that it is something like intuition in them. That's the gift. That's the gift. Somebody might not understand where I'm coming from, but get me right. It will save you. It's a gift. If you like, look at some house. When even you see their small, small children, a day that we even name them, they start to ask for the price of car ties. And it tells you that these people, they will buy a helicopter. But look at others. Even when you give them in gallons, they say, let's eat. Let's eat. Because we are born one day, we're going to die one day. That's, that's, that's indignous nature. That's the habit. That's the, uh, you, that is who they are. But when you are gifted, when you know what you are headed to, the Daniels wake up not just one day, but they have then have got the gift. They've got the spiritual gift. So when he stood there and nobody could interpret what the king had dreamt, the Bible says he stood there, he said, King, I wasn't in your bed with you. I wasn't in your chambers with you, not even in your bedroom with you. But that says what you saw. You saw a big tree. Is that? And that big tree, there was some human being with a grown nails. Uh, is that how we call it? Nails. And uh, he was he knelt under the tree and he was crying. Ken, did you see that? Then he started, he faced shame. He got panicked. He said it. He said, is that a dream? He said, exactly what I saw. He said, if it is exactly, listen to your interpretation. You have exalted yourself too much. And God Almighty said, that tree, you're going to go under it. And you, the king of all, you're going to become an animal. The news you saw have overgrown. You are going to be like that. And God is going to deal with you until you recognize that he is God. And then you will be changed back into your human nature. Oh, oh my goodness. Listen to me. Thank God for Trump. Thank God for all of them. Thank God for those in our country. But if we know how to talk, let's begin to be quiet. And let's say, as we are here, let's say we will dignify ourselves, come into the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is using us this room, they will come after us. You won't go after them. They will come after us. We won't go after them. Whether they like us or not, Come on, they will come after us. They will. You know one thing? From the book of Proverbs, let's read something here. From the book of Proverbs, I guess it's chapter. The book of Proverbs. Yeah. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verses 15 to 16. Please read with me. It says, 
The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeks what? Wisdom. A man gives, makes room. I mean, what? Uh, uh, yeah, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Let's read 16 together. Go. A man's gifts makes room for him and brings him before who? It is your gift. I, 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 I saw something, uh, this particular North Korea king that was the small boy or whichever, uh, our president called him Mr. Rocket. <laughs> the rocket man. I saw that he doesn't listen to anybody. But it happened one of the American basket. Uh, you, you, you saw that he, he met with him. He had pictures with him. What, what is of that boy? Are you getting it? His gift. His gift. I can bet you by his grace, I'm highly educated than Osebo. Don't you think so? If you like, go and read about him and let me put my out and read about me. But there is the empty seat here. Let's make an announcement next week that Osebo will come to church here. Are you getting me? Oh, yes. Oh, it, well, we'll see both. <laughs> Unless we look for more seeds here. He carried something. The, 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 theologically, we say he carries the charisma. The charisma is the grace. You see, I, I want to whet your appetite. That when you are looking for things, stop the petty, petty things. Daniel saw that the others, the things they were looking for were petty, petty things. Listen, whilst the small boy, the prodigal son, was saying, I will go home. And father was giving him the whole inheritance. The senior came. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> Papa. You didn't give me even a military bar. That stupid senior there. You're not claiming the house. You're claiming a military bar. Are you getting the mentality? Please, I'm sorry. I'm not here to be insultive to Africa. But this is our thinking. This is our thinking. I, 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 I got highly excited and highly challenge when I heard from a bunch of ministers. When there is something good about us, we don't magnify it. Do you know that the most biggest church in the world now is from an African? Odiapo. Yes. Copeland and the wife were saying that, oh yeah, the poor read one of their book on prosperity. And he implemented it. Now, oh yeah, the poor is the richest man of God on planet Earth. As much as the biggest church, he has now overtaken that one in uh, South Korea. When good things are coming from Africa, we don't magnify it. Come on. Go to Accra Mall and see. I was at Teshinungwa Estates. They built one more there at the uh, Barrier Junction. Trust me, it's beautiful than the ones we have in Accra here. Uh, in America. Can we call that a uh, uh, shit uh, who? God is doing mighty things. Mighty things. Powerful things. You've forgotten that civilization even started from Africa. 
You don't know that? You don't know civilization started from our hometown? I'm not furious, but I want to also, if they say it's a gap, I want to fill the gap today. I want to tell you that you're worth it. Look, let me tell you. At a point in time, at a point in time, Mrs. Clinton was leading uh, Trump in all departments. Just one day, I opened television. I saw all the men of God in America, and they were saying, they don't care who is leading and who is behind, but they're going to pray so that God will give America a king. This appeared on the television. I'm not doing politics, and even if I'm doing politics, I'm speaking the truth. And trust me, I saw when uh, Copeland took the microphone, and the way he spoke, and after he put the microphone down, and John Hagee spoke, I said, these people will turn around this election. At once, after the men of God spoke, I said, this election will turn around. So from that time, I was able to get convinced in my head that Trump is going to win. Because from their talking, I knew who was behind their mind. What am I talking about? Listen to me. That, that Babylonian king who became the first empire in the world, was the next that his son became the second empire in the world? Was the next that Darius became the third empire in the world? And that was how it went on. And let me tell you, Daniel used his gift to serve these kings. Let me tell you, it was the gift of Daniel that made the empire great. It was the gift of Daniel. It was that gift of Daniel, which he saw it as an excellent spirit that made the empire great. That prophesied about how the world is going to be. It was the gift of the men of God in this country that brought Trump into the stew. I'm telling you. And if you're talking about the gift, what are the source of gifts? Jesus. Can I prove a point to you? Where was dear Jesus eat? Talk Bible. Even when that Jesus was born, God himself said, Joseph, if you don't go and hide him in Africa, Herod will kill him. And I guess if that dear God that brought empires, if that they are God, that brought President Trump on the stool, took Jesus to Egypt in Africa, and out of that hid him before he brought him to be a governor which was on his shoulder. Then by immigration, when Jesus was passing the border into America, shit smells on him. I didn't say it, but calculate it. Do you get what I'm saying? That's Jesus I'm talking about. I'm talking about a gift here. If you have the gift, it doesn't care where you come. When Nebuchadnezzar brought Daniel's and they came into Babylon. He had every right to kill them because they were his slaves. But they are exceptional gifts. And they have Daniel to become next to him, prime minister. And that wasn't just a guess. That wasn't just uh, what we call it. Uh, what word do I use? Sometimes things can happen. Just by coincidence, you use the right word. He said, after Daniel went, the next one that came, Daniel, after Nebuchadnezzar died, the next one that came, Daniel went to the same. After that one so went, the next one that came, Daniel even became higher. 
Taya. Taya. What was he talking about? The gift. And the gift is Jesus. The gift is Jesus. Listen to me. I told you when our president Trump came on the throne that if you people know how to keep quiet and we can pray, is this man God who used to bless you. You remember that? Yes. I'm telling you the truth. Bible is so clear. Trump wouldn't have gone to the White House if God had not put him there. All you need is to know how to use your gift. All you need is to know how to use your gift. Let me tell you the truth. Some of you might be calling Obama, Obama, Obama. Praise God. I love Obama. He comes from the side of the world I came from. But then, listen. If you want to talk about Christianity and this 503C and all these things, the present tax reform that Trump passed give an entrance for you to switch around your money more than when Obama was on. You haven't understood the loopholes yet. Let's put aside, there is no law that have no weakness. For that one is a fact. And also maybe you haven't got to some level, you must always, you, you must always only think about your deduction. That will be the level. But let me tell you, this is the time some of you, even if you can switch millions without contradiction. What am I talking about? When this Darius, Nebuchadnezzar, Atasis, Cyrus, is that Cyrus? When they were making love, they thought they were tightening the, the Jews. But they ended up, they were the people who built the broken down wall of Jerusalem. They sent the, uh, Nehemiah. They sent the Ezra. They send them with multi stuffs. Listen to me. Look for the gift. If you have the gift, your gifts are the skills. Your sister, tell me the truth. When you are hiring someone and you are doing pharmacy and you are going for interview and hopefully... Uh, a Samoa comes and he says he passed out, um, he passed school from uh, Harvard University. So he had a doctorate in pharmacy. Praise God. And then I will show up. I said, I also passed out from <laughs> so so and so theological school. Which one will you take? Put it aside whether you respect me or I'm your pastor or me. Which one will you take? Take me there and see. Tons doesn't issue prescription. Tons doesn't issue prescription. You take me, I can predict for you prophecy. I will create confusion there. Your work will close down with all my tons. I'm not the person there. I'm not the person there. I'm talking about the gift. If you have the skills and God, you have desired it and you have got it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking spirit on you. I'm not just taking advantage of talking what the president has said or what he hasn't said. That's not my bother. I'm just interpreting current affairs. And this thing having happened, I said it here last week that I will be using this to interpret politics. Except that we have got a crew to work with. I want to tell you the truth. Your gift. Your gift. And how to acquire the gift is when you desire it, you will have it. When you desire it, you will have it. I, 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 went, I went to a family to visit them this week. And before I was going, then the Holy Spirit told me, when you go, Tell him that he should go back home. I said, whoa, God. This man has got such a job. He has got such a position. And yet he is sick and he has called me. I have prayed for him. They have brought him home. 
and I'm going to visit him. Is that what you want me to go and tell him? I was looking for a place of escape. I said, there should be wisdom. I should find a nice way to say, God said, there is no nice way about it. When you go, tell him, one, two, three, you should go back home. I didn't know any business about the man. I don't know anything. He is the one I gave a praise to worship here. You could see recently there was something, something Revelation Church. Yeah. I didn't go in his way. He brought me in his way. He said, Pastor, I am in Fairfax Hospital, and you are the only black person I want you to come and see where I am. I need you. I said, wait, you will see me there in a minute. Took my wife, we went. And by God's grace, he did an interventional powers. He brought him home. So going to visit him in the home, God told me, go and tell him. Looking at the background and the whole thing behind what God told me to go and tell him, it was very emotional. But after I did all the tricks, if I can turn it and the Holy Spirit said, you can't turn it. I said, okay, I will tell him. We got there and as soon as we got into the house, God created a circumstance for the thing to be said. So, you know, my wife is here. I just asked him, Mr. So-so and so, can you tell me a little about your immigration status? That's wisdom they give. He said, Pastor, don't talk. Can you tell me what he said? Say it so that I continue. He said, Pastor, there you go. He said, Pastor, don't talk. I have made a decision. I am shaping myself. You ship goose. Was it? It was what? <laughs> That's the word. You, he said, I'm shipping myself. That means everything is going. Then as soon as he said that, the sister ran into the room. He said, Pastor, what is happening here? I was praying tonight, deciding to look for somebody that this man feels shy so that I can put to him to come and counsel him that if nothing at all, you should go home. And this is what he's saying. And you could see the thing coming. Don't joke with the Holy Spirit. He knows everything. He says everything. Okay. Ask for the Holy Spirit. But when you get him, when you get him, church, when you get him, listen, when you get him, I don't prescribe you to be a good wife. I can prescribe you to be a spirit-filled wife. He would teach you skills. He would teach you skills in marriage. Man, he would teach you skills in taking women. Holy Spirit, desire him. Church, I love you. I'm telling you the premium. I'm telling you the platinum. I'm telling you the most limited message people don't say often. And therefore, when because of the gift of the Daniels, and God blessed the other nation, and God by his Holy Spirit caused the other kings, to let the Jews go back to their home. Now, listen, I'm going to give you something why we are going to fast and pray this week. The Bible says in the book of Ezra, can we read from here, chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. It says, Then I proclaim a fast day at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. When I was praying for the little ones, you don't know how I was travailing within me. I feel like I will vomit Holy Spirit on them because they are our tomorrow. And our little ones. 
For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we have spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayer. Put your hands together and bless God. <laughs> Do you know? Let, uh, so I put a note for you here. Can we all say it together? Don't mind about my English. I'm not a grammarian. So let me see if I can help. Go. That's wealth without God's direction is worthless. Do you agree? I'm talking about wealth. Many yes, direction. When they talk, listen. You fear them. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar was a king, but he had no direction of God, yet he was a fool. So sometimes it is you who envy them. Hey, oh, was he cool? Hey, or your big man, or your big man, and a senior prayer. Look for the main thing, the Holy Spirit. The main thing, the Holy Spirit, the God-fearing, the power, the the the, the, the distant, oh, the dinner, the power. This, it, it, see, this is what happened, and then I will be done. I have so many things to talk, so we'll continue next time. This time, Daniel has set the pace. This Ezra and Nehemiah, they didn't do anything, no. They were there and at the command of the king, they said, get possession, get gold, silver, and the rest. And go and build your country. Then uh, the king said, because I love you people, because of what your Daniel did for me, the gift they helped me to build this country, which one day is going to come. Because of what our ancestors came to do in this country, one day we shall enjoy it. Transferring of wealth. Have you seen that they have started, one person was over 50 years, and records indicate that in the green books of one particular university, some of the blacks were used for certain work. So they've written in their green books that their ancestors must have a free education in the school. And they never knew about all this until just recently it got on uh, review. So one of the households have entered in. Is not the rest going to follow? It takes a revelation. It takes one day for what belongs to you to be unfolded. And this is where the dynamics of the Holy Spirit comes to play. You will be rich. God will explode your abundance. I just want you to take it. Because I have nothing better for you than the right words of the Holy Spirit. So, I just want to come back here. The Daniels and the rest have done the work. Like, hopefully, the blast came here to work. And maybe Trump has seen the fact that they should be blessed. Then Trump told them, listen, I want to give you some of my big bottom I have on my table. He said he got powerful one on his table than the rocket man has. But his works. Is that what my papa said? I like that man. Yes. Trust me. If I were to be Trump, I would have said much serious than he told that king. How can you be threatening America with your bomb? Well, as I can destroy your whole town under a second. Sometimes you have can't work on Kwasi Asem. Be a Asem. When, what was that guy? That tall, huge man who wanted to threat David. When Goliath said, you come in with me, he said, you two, you will see. That was what transferred. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you come in with me with uh, uh, this thing and this thing. David also said, I miss you to this and that and that. That's what he said. You threaten me with what you have on your table. Me too, I have a bigger one. When I punch it, <laughs> hey, Papa Trump, 
<laughs> That's my man there. I pray for him a lot. Yes, I am giving a figure. Whether you get it or not, he himself understands what I'm saying. Read the book of Daniel. The kings behave just like Trump is doing and others have done. If you look at the types, the typologies of the king they came in between the three realms, you will get the one who behaves like Obama. You will, behave, you will get the one who behaves like Trump. You will get the one who behaves like George Bush. If, if you say I'm lying, let them come and catch me. I'll open the Bible for them. Typology of character. But Daniel didn't get detail. Because he was depending on his what? His God. His God. His God. That time, their home has have strong walls. Their home has riches and everything. So that time, if you were to compare Babylon to Israel, it was like comparing America to Haiti. Am I talking Bible? It's the same thing. But because Daniel believed in his gift, it was the gift that did the difference. And now the gift has brought abundance. And they are giving them gold and things to go and build their home country. Then they went ahead to black. He said, oh, Mr. Trump, we don't need the bombs. We don't need the mocha. We don't need anything. We can go by ourselves. Well, <laughs> Did I read it with you? Oh, we can go. We can go and build our war. War has been talking about building since the time of that. It's not just a time of Mexico and America. Everything is in Bible. So when they saw the money and the gold, they pick all of them. Then when they got to the middle of the road, then they got to a junction. I said, one will say, this goes to Egypt. Another says, this goes to Babylon. Another says, this goes here. So they were stranded. Then one said, what we are about to say this week. He said, hey, Ezra. Hey, Nehemiah. Let's stop struggling about the junction. Which route he go? Whether he goes to where or where or where. But let, let's do something. He said, what? He said, let's all of us go on our knees. And proclaim a fast. And humble ourselves. That's what America needs. Let's humble ourselves. That's what Africa we need. We have a country with a less than whatever G, G, yeah, what we call it. GDP. And yet go and see. Some cars that Trump doesn't sit in there. We sit in. Here, let me tell you the truth. If Trump is going to Richmond and 10 cars follow him, the next day CNN will be on his neck. But let the, just the regional minister. Are you understanding me? Let the regional minister or let just one of the Ghana pastors just on his Sunday service you will see Cadillac. You will see. <laughs> Name them. Big shots. So he used the word, let's humble ourselves. Do you understand the word? Let's humble ourselves. Let's come down. Let's start to think like rational beings things. And the way rational beings things is the thinking of God help us. If I were to be the leaders of Africa, that is what I would say. I would say, don't mind whichever comment. It's a food for thought for us to think right. For God to help us. Because I predict and I prophesy. Listen to me. Africa is coming out big time. Mark it and see. We're coming out big time. So it's the time we got to talk like this. 2008, 28 or whatever, 18. God help us. And that is where the, the, the dynamics of the Holy Spirit comes in. So the Bible says, when they came down and they prayed and fasted, 
Then the next time they cease debating about which route they should take, the Holy Spirit says, have the way. You don't need to go back to ask for any protection. Listen, you don't need any 49K or whatever. That's 41K. 41K will make you. You will make 41K. Immigration will make you. You will make immigration. Uh, uh, three, three, three days ago, that, that was a week tomorrow. The whole last week, like when I was standing here ministering, I was on program. I was on health program. As tomorrow, when I mean Sunday like this, when I was standing here for a long time, no food has even touched me. All what I was living on was water. And the Monday I was supposed to go and have a program. I went to the hospital and then they kept my wife away from me and then they put me in the wheel. And when they were taking me and they have bandaged me and the rest, then I look at heaven and the quotation that came in my mouth, Peter is true. You know what Peter said? He said it will come to a time they will take you somewhere with your health. You can't go there. Somebody will kill you. I said, this is Bible. And I sat in the week. And they were taking me. They were taking me. I said, let me be careful. This water doesn't fall down. I don't know what was in the water. And when they got to the entrance of the theater or whichever, and then they put me on particular ward, they said, we, we want to put something into you. I said, hey, will you permit my wife to come? He said, no, this is for you. I say, <laughs> then I said, Holy Spirit, I commit my life into your hands. Then when I look, I couldn't see Holy Spirit. I said, let me feel him. You know how I feel him? I speak tongues. I said, Doc, wait a minute. I said it in my head. If nobody is here, you are here. I spoke with him. And the word that came to me, I will let you soundly sleep. So, oh my goodness. She, and she know what I was going to say. So they didn't even bring the crow. Was it the crow? I was gone already. But I'm a person. When I sleep or when I'm about to sleep, switch all lights, everything. Let even pin drops down, I will wake up. But when I communicated with him, I went like a baby. And they said when they finished, everybody has wake up. And I was alone, snobbing, snoring, soundly slept. So they asked my wife, and my wife said, why has everyone gone and my husband alone is lying? They said, everything is right with your husband. But he is peacefully sleeping. So they, they said, what happened? They, wake, they shook and wake me up. And as soon as I got up, I jumped from the bed. I picked my, <laughs> I picked my stuff to put them on. They said, no, sit down, sit down. I was in hurry to go home. So I came home whilst my wife was telling me all this. I said, oh my goodness. If you don't know how death is like, look at how it is like sleeping. But what am I talking about? Holy Spirit comforted me. Holy Spirit. He gave me the peace of mind. He gave me the sound mind. The Holy Spirit works. Let's make him our friend. Let him be our everything. When we talk with him, when we communicate with him, when we say you should have his way, he does. That's the gift. And that is the more and more reason why, because see, the rest, the church, we have said this week, listen to me, to seek the face of God. Prosperity in 2018. Without the direction of God, it's not a prosperity. You will lose them. You will misuse them. But when God is leading you, when God is leading you, when God is helping you, when God is backing you, that's where you know the way. God keeps you. Let it be your desire that you will get the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah.
Mama, come and let me pray for you. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I, I, you know what? This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you. Don't let this come into the recording. Switch it off. 